Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Huawei Routing and Switching HCIE Elite Training. My name is Yap Chi Yuan. I'm a trainer for InfoSight, and we are Huawei Authorized Learning Partner. In this video, I'm going to look into BGP Basic. All right. So, what is a BGP? BGP stands for Border Gateway Protocol. So this is a external gateway protocol, and BGP um, used on different autonomous system, or in this case, we call that as uh, inter autonomous system routing protocol. Now, the objective for our slide here, we are going to look into the BGP principle, the command on the uh, Huawei configuration on the BGP, uh, the troubleshooting skill on the BGP, uh, some of the enhanced features on the BGP, and some of the uh, HCIE. Uh, SM's skill. Let's look into the uh, content here. So first we are going to look into the principle. All right. So the principle on the BGP include the BGP overview, the BGP concept, the BGP working principle, the interaction between BGP and IGP, the attribute on the BGP because in BGP we have very rich attribute we look into the routing rules on the BGP because a BGP on Huawei, the selection are quite different compared to other vendors as well. Then we look into the loop balancing and finally we look into how we can extend the BGP. Now first, let's look into the uh, BGP overview. Now BGP is considered EGP, all right, because we only have uh, IGP and EGP. Uh, IGP is include your ISIS, OSPF, RIP. Okay, so these are our IGP. Now EGP, we only have a BGP. Now uh, we have a version one, version two, uh, version three, and the current version is the uh, version four. So we are looking into the version four uh, at this moment of time. Now BGP uses TCP as a transport layer. All right. So among all these protocol that I mentioned above over here, only BGP uses a TCP. Okay. And the port number they are using is a TCP one seventy nine as their destination port. The source port can be random. Now to, uh, the uh, BGP support uh, classless interdomain routing. Okay. So this is not a classful, but it's a classless routing protocol. Now to save the uh, bandwidth, uh, BGP uses incremental update. Okay, it is a path vector routing protocol. All right, so it actually uses the path vector. So the path over here referring to our AS path vector in uh, referring to the direction. Okay, now uh, BGP have uh, many way to eliminate loops. So we are going to look into. Um, how BGP eliminate loops. Uh, the, the loop prevention can be in uh, intra BGP or inter BGP. Okay, so we are going to look into more detail on that. So basically, BGP do not have a loop. Now, BGP have a rich routing policy. You know, one of the uh, benefits on using BGP because that they have a lot of attribute and we can use a policy to do filtering for inbound and filtering for outbound. Now BGP also have a um, dampening method to prevent route flapping. Okay, so we are we will look into the method on the BGP dampening, and uh, finally BGP uses TLV or type length value to extend its capability. Let's look into the concept of autonomous system. Okay, so according to definition, an AS is a group of routers that are managed by a single technical administration. So in the layman term, uh, typically it's like if you are working with a service provider, that service provider is under a single technical administration and use the same routing policy. Okay, so typically the AS is um, denoted by this number. So the number can be from one to six, five, five, Three, five, okay. So, but this number, uh, they do have a certain number for public and certain number for private. Okay. So for the private number, we have six four five one two to six five 
five three five. Anything from one to six four five one one is considered a, a public, and public is being assigned by organization called IANA. All right. So this this is the organization who assign the AS number. So whenever we look into the BGP, we need to know what is the BGP uh, AS number. And please remember that we have two version of the uh, AS number. So we have a two byte or four byte. So this is a two byte, which is a sixty bit. Okay. This is the old version. The new version is four byte. So it will give us a thirty two bit. Okay. So Huawei do support both uh, the old version as well as the uh, current version. In BGP, we have uh, two concepts. One is called external BGP, and the other one is called internal BGP. So let's look into the difference between eBGP and iBGP. Now in this diagram, I have three AS. So we have AS100, 200, and 300. So these three AS are connected through these routers R1 to R2, so we call this as eBGP. The reason we call this as eBGP because that 200 and 100 belong to two different AS. So these two different AS, uh, the relationship is called eBGP. And between R2 and R3, you notice that both of these routers are belong to the same AS. So we call it as iBGP. So when BGP run within an AS, we call it as an iBGP. Okay, so when BGP run between, so we have between over here, so we call it as a eBGP. So whenever we look into the configuration, it's very important for you to know that whether it is an a, uh, iBGP or eBGP. Now there is a concept over here saying that uh, if you remember that BGP do not have a loop. Now this is how they control the loop. Now when R1 send the route update to R2, is going to append is AS to uh, AS100. So assuming that R1 sent to R2, R2 is going to put in AS200 to R2. R2 is going to advertise to R3, and R3 is going to advertise to uh, R4. So when R4 receive it, it will able to see that this is AS100 and AS200 when uh, R3, uh, R4 receive it. Now assuming that there is a connectivity between R1 and R4, and if let's say R4 is going to send to R2, or in this case R1, sorry, so you will able to see that they have a AS300, AS100, and AS200. Now when router one saw that there is a AS100 inside there, so this packet will be dropped. Okay, so this is how we can assure that in BGP we do not have a loop using the um, AS number. Now, uh, they also have another concept over here. Sometimes when you look into the uh, manual, those routers that enable for BGP, we call it as a BGP speaker. Okay, BGP speaker. So 1, 2, 3, and 4, those routers are considered BGP speaker. Now, R1 and R2, we call it as a peer. All right, but this is a e BGP peer, whereas R two and R three we call it as i BGP peer. Okay, so these are some of the terms you need to be familiar with. BGP uses five message type, namely open message, update message, keep alive message, notification message, and route refresh message. So let's look into the open message first. Now, when two router on BGP, when they connect to each other using TCP, first they are going to do the three-way handshaking. Once the three-way handshaking is complete, the router is going to send the first message is an open, open message. This is for them to um, form a neighbor relationship. So once the neighbor relationship is formed and they do agree on the parameters, the next one will be the update message. So router on the BGP is going to send a route update between uh, routers. In this case, R1 is going to send an update to R2, and R2 is going to send an update to R1. Okay. So once the update is complete, we are going to uh, send what we call the keep alive message. So keep alive message will be sent once the update already been complete. So the keep alive message is for you to maintain the BGP neighbor relationship. If for the keep alive message exceed the whole 
time, all right, so the peering will go down. Okay, so that is our keep alive message. And if let's say the BGP detected there's any error, they are going to send what we call the notification message. The primary function of the notification message that contain error code is to inform the neighbor BGP on what type of error. And finally, we have a route refresh message. Now this is a message that requests the BGP peer to resend the route after a routing policy are changed. For example, if let's say R1 have an inbound policy here, and this inbound policy has been updated. So R1 is going to send R2 a route refresh. Now R2 is going to send an update to R1 and uh, the update will be uh, uh, received by R1 with the new uh, inbound policy. BGP finite state machine or what we call the FSM. So here we have six state on on the uh, BGP finance state machine, uh, namely idle state, connect state, active state, open send, open confirm, and establish. Uh, when we first start the BGP, it will go into the idle state. So assuming that now I have two router, router one and router two. So when both router just started the BGP, the very initial state, uh, we will be in the idle state. All right, so this is the idle state. So in the idle state, BGP will not able to connect to the BGP to another peer. All right, so once you already started the uh, uh, BGP, so once we start the BGP, it will go from the idle state to the connect state. In the connect state, we are going to start to send the TCP. All right, TCP. So they will going to go through the three-way handshake. Once the three-way handshake is established, as, as you can see from here, three-way handshake is established, it will go from the connect state to the open send. Now in between the three-way handshake, we will have a sync, sync act, and act. All right. Now, assuming that this three-way handshake is not complete, then we will go into the active st state. In active state, this state is where the BGP fail the TCP handshake. Okay, so the BGP has, has not complete the handshaking yet, right? So once the TCP handshake is established, it will go into the open send. Now in the open send, the open message will be sent from router one to router two and vice versa. Okay, so once both router receive the open uh, message correctly, it will trans, trans, uh, transit from the open send to the open confirm. Now, then the R1 and R2 is going to send what we call a keep alive. Okay, so R1 will send to R2 as a keep alive and R2 will send to R1 as a keep alive. And assuming that the keep alive uh, validation is correct, everything is in order, then they are going to send the update message. Okay, and now they establish. So we will have the open message, okay, open message. Then we will have our keep alive message. And we also have our update message. Okay, so these are the three messages that are important for the establish of the uh, BGP. And here we have our six finite state machine idle, connect, active, open send, open confirm, and establish. And remember for you to see your finite state machine, you always do a display BGP peer, and you should look for establish. All right, this is where your BGP is in good order. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.